Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyid al-Mursaleen Amma ba'd Episode number 17 And today we're doing The Boycott What's a boycott? Mama, what's a boycott? A boycott is a boy And then bring in the car That's exactly what I said Sorry, what's a boycott? When you don't have anything When you don't have anything what do you mean when you don't have anything? People in Syria right now, are they boycotted when they don't have anything? No. Yeah. So what's the difference between them and the boycott? No, because they got food, like a little bit of food. Okay. And they just had to eat like grass. Right. A boycott is when you have a person like this guy and he says that this guy I'm not going to be his friend anymore. This yellow guy. I'm not going to be his friend. Oh, let's just talk about the yellow guy because he's got his back to him. Hey, can you be my friend? No. I'm not going to speak to you from now on. You're not going to get any food. You're not going to be going to work. Now You've you got gonna... no friends. But why? It's because you're a Muslim. And I don't like Muslims. Oh, what am I supposed to do now? Now you're supposed to bully him. No. Do Muslims bully? No. No, oh, this guy. Him. Yeah, no, but they've tried bullying and it didn't work. They've tried hitting and it didn't work. And they can't do it now because there's two other people who have become Muslim. Who's become Muslim? Who's become Muslim? Who's that? And then Umar. And they're too strong. They can't hit Muslims anymore. So now they're going to do a boycott. And a boycott basically means when one person cuts off the other person. We're not going to be his friend. We're not going to make sure that any good things happen to him anymore. He's not going to have any, uh, he's not going to go to school, he's not going to have any food, he's not going to have any drink. And like we said last time, some of the companions said that we had to eat leaves. Because we had no food. Nobody was helping us. Nobody was giving us anything. Sit properly. And some of them became very, very poorly. Imagine if you only ate grass every single day. It's not very nice. But then what's going to happen to your body? That's what happened. I've seen this one video, yeah. There was a man in Syria and he died and all he was eating for like a long time, I think it was like for one whole year, all he was eating was leaves. Because that's all he could find. Leaves, imagine. And his body looked terrible. And he died. You know why he died? Why? He froze to death because he had no clothes. That's how poor he was. And that's what the boycott basically meant for the company. So no clothes, like no ice. food, so no drink. Like yeah. So basically it was so cold. He froze and he was like trying to keep his body warm and his whole body just shut down because it froze and, and his blood froze and his heart stopped pumping and so everything. Like and he just died like that, like still. And his body looked terrible because he's been eating leaves for like such a long time. A lot of mercy on him. Say I mean. A lot give him Jannah. Say I mean. Right. So that's a boycott. This is what they were doing. But it's a bit different. What's the difference between Syria and that man and a boycott here? What's the difference? The difference is boycott is when one person does it to another person. Whereas that man in Syria, he was just poor because of he's living in a war. And, you know, people are being mean in a war. And they might not necessarily want to be mean to him, but he got the effects of the war. What's a boycott, Muhammad? Don't say a boy inside of a cot, please. What's a boycott? Uh, what? Uh, uh, someone has no food. Yeah, no. So now this yellow guy has said to this dinosaur, I'm not going to be your friend anymore. That's a boycott. And he's going to make sure that nothing good happens to you. That's called a boycott. Now, how long did it last? It was like they were living in a prison for three years. Nothing good happened to them. Nothing good was coming their way. And it was become very, very difficult. Not 300, Muhammad, three years. And then some of the kuffar, some of the disbelievers, they started saying, no, this is wrong. You're not allowed to do this. This is just mean. Why are you being mean for? These are your family members. Imagine you're doing it to your cousin. No speaking, no food, no drink, no nothing. Or your uncle. Or your uncle, maybe. Or your even uncle. your own parents, maybe. Your or even your own uncle. children, maybe. Right. So you know what happened? After three years, one day, the Prophet Sallallahu he was obviously uh, uh, affected as well. He didn't have much food or drink. And one day, he was praying next to the Kaaba. But you're not allowed to. What? 
No, because they banned it at Kaaba. No, no, no. They tried to stop him from praying next to the Kaaba, but they couldn't. One day he was praying near the Kaaba. And Allah told... Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell you something about the boy's mom. <laughs> what they did is they wrote down on a piece of paper... Oh, yeah, yeah. That nobody's going to talk and nobody's going to do this. And then they hung it inside the Kaaba. One day the Prophet ﷺ was praying after three years next to the Kaaba. And Allah told him through Jibreel السلام, that guess what? what? That piece of paper has been destroyed. By ants. Except the name of Allah. Oh, yeah, but we didn't know it was done by ants. It's been destroyed. Now, listen. If you've got a piece of paper inside of a building and nobody's touched it, is it going to get destroyed by itself? No. Would it get? Would a piece of paper just become destroyed by itself? No, and nobody touched it. Insects and stuff. Like nobody's touched it. Nobody's been inside the Kaaba, and they think it's inside those doors. If we put a pi Some piece of paper, tell you that the top of the Kaaba. if we put a piece of paper here inside the Kaaba, Muhammad, Some and the door is locked and nobody's been inside. Some people right. say it was over here. Right. Okay. Say it was inside, yeah? Nobody's been inside. Is the piece of paper going to get destroyed by itself? No. No. No, and, uh, no wait, listen, 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 listen. So the Prophet ﷺ said, the paper has been destroyed. So he went to Abu Talib. Abu Talib was his uncle. And Abu Talib was the one that was protecting him. And Abu Talib said, look, are you sure about this, Muhammad? Because, وسلم, because if you're saying, if you're not saying the truth, then it's going to be really bad for you. The boycott's going to get even worse. So the Prophet ﷺ said, yes, I'm saying the truth. And Abu Talib knew that the Prophet ﷺ never lies. He knew it. So he called the people over and he said, my nephew has got something to say to you. And he said, let's open the door. And I can guarantee you that, that piece of paper is gone. They said, oh yeah? Nobody's been in the camp. Are you sure about that? He said, yes. Because Allah has told me. So they said, if the piece of paper is still there, then it's going to be very, very bad for you. But if the piece of paper is gone, boycott over. Boycott over. They open the door. Guess what? What, what happened, Muhammad? Oh. Ants ate up all the paper. Except the names. Except for the names of Allah. And they realized they were shocked. They knew that this was from Allah because nobody's been inside. And even if somebody went inside, how does Muhammad وسلم, know about it? How does he know if the ants have eaten it? Because, they, Allah, because Allah always tells me. Exactly, but they didn't admit that, did they? They didn't want to say that he's the messenger of Allah. They kept saying that he's a liar. So you know when they saw the piece of paper, guess what they said? Oh. This is just magic. You've just done magic. You're not a prophet. This is just magic. So they said, if you are speaking the truth, give me another sign. So the Prophet ﷺ made dua. And guess what? what? The moon... The moon, there's a moon on this side, mm -hmm. and it got split into half. Well, worse than that, but I'll just stretch. The moon got split. So, say, pretend that's the moon, and the other green part is part of the moon. It went like this split into half, and everybody saw it. And then they said, No, you're just tricking us. This is just magic. And people came from outside of Makkah and they said, What happened to the moon? Did you see the moon? So how can you make magic on the whole world? You can't make magic on the whole no, world. No, no. That means Allah it was a sign. Just doing that. Exactly, it was a sign Allah. from Allah for them. But they still disbelieved and they say, In Hada illa sihrun mustamir. This is just magic that is carrying on. You did magic before with the boycott and now you're doing magic again with the, the moon. What does this teach us, Salih? What do you think you learned from this story of the boycott? Uh, the, 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 the wait, wait, friend. wait, take turns. If you want to speak, put your hand the, up. The prophets say the truth and they're lying. Good. Instead of it being the other way. There, there you go. So the people of Taqwa and the people of Iman, the people who believe in Islam, mm -hmm. they say good things and they don't say bad things. They say the truth and they do not lie. Muhammad, what do you think you learned from uh, this story? Well, well, you know the ants. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, they were sneaking inside the Kaaba yeah. and they ate all, all, all of the people. Okay, but then what do you learn from that? That, that the boycott is very bad. Good, the boycott is very bad and Allah doesn't like very bad things and he will even use his ants, a very small part of his creation, to stop bad things from happening. They, like the yeah. ants inside the, the, the spring of things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What else, Ali? What else do you learn from this story? Boycott, three years, no food, no drink. Did they stop listening? No. What did they do? 
If someone's being mean to you, can you say, oh, I'm not going to be Muslim anymore? No. What else do we learn from this story? Never to give up. Never to give up. Excellent. What else do we learn from this story? The Prophet was praying. Mm -hmm. And what happened when he was praying? Uh, a paper comes. No. New oh, Allah told... gave him the right way when he was praying. Therefore, what that means is, if you want good things to happen to you, you need to be connected to Allah. And the best way you can be connected to Allah is by Salat. And doing uh, taqwa. And having taqwa and doing good deeds. That's right. Anything else we learn from this story before we call it a day? Uh, no. Saleh, one last thing that you learn from this story one very quickly. Last thing for me yeah, that one, one thing each. They couldn't beat the Prophet's family up, but they did something else. Yeah, we know that, but then what do you learn from that? Um, that boy could say bad. Muhammad already said that. Muhammad already said that. Take that off. That you should never. Do bad stuff to anybody. Uh, okay, well, I'll accept that. Muhammad, what else do you learn from this story? That, that, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, someone spotted, uh, someone spotted a paper inside the... Paper. Yeah, you said that, the previous one. That was your same point as before. All right. Ask Allah to give us Iman, say Ameen, Ameen. and that He is pleased with us, say Ameen. Ameen. Allah give us Jannah, say Ameen. Ameen. Allah give us good deeds, say Ameen. Ameen. Allah save us from the fire, say Ameen. Ameen. Allah save us from bad things and bad people and bad actions. Hada wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.